Hello. So, not put up much recently because not had much to say, really. What are we in? Week five, six? I've lost track. I don't even know what fucking day it is. Friday. Is it Friday? Thanks, love. Uh, <laughs> as you can tell, uh, Groundhog Day is in full, uh, full effect at the Crossland household. Um... How you're getting on with your home workouts? It would appear that the novelty is starting to wear off for a lot of people. Um, God knows where we're going with this. God knows how much longer it's going to be. Um, but there has been a few things cropping up uh, that I wanted to cover in regards to the current situation and people cycling and immune responses and such like that. So, first thing is, technically you cannot boost your immune system, but you can maximize its efficiency. Um, one of the biggest killers to your immune system is stress. Now, this can be physical stress, tiredness, this can be emotional stress, worry, this can be information and stress caused by poor diet, alcohol consumption, all sorts of things. But they were all um, reduce your immune system's efficiency. Um, supplements that do help with the immune system, the vitamin C, particularly high dose. Though bear in mind if you've got kidney problems, you need to watch your vitamin C intake. Vitamin D, exposure to sunlight, exercise, vitamin B12, a healthy balanced diet, no alcohol, uh, vegetables, you know, the, the basic stuff that we already know about is healthy to do, even though we may neglect it to some degree. Um, so all these things are going to help keep your, your immune system at its optimum, uh, obviously giving you the better chance to, to fight off the virus if you are unfortunate enough to contract it. Um, you can't really boost your immune system beyond its genetic capabilities. You can just remove obstacles that reduce its efficiency. Now, quite often, uh, at various times, our immune system will be working to deal with an underlying virus or infection or whatever it may be, and we won't even realize. We won't really have symptoms. Um, and then it's only when something else comes to the front. You'll have heard people say, oh, got run down, so I've caught this cold. And, and that's literally it. Our immune system is busy in the background, dealing with something, keeping it at bay. And then something else comes on top, makes it difficult for our immune system to cope. And then as a result, we get a bigger reaction to the viruses and we start showing symptoms. And quite often, a lot of our symptoms are our immune system kicking in. Now... There's been a lot of talk from various people um, who I don't know, they're just doing it because they like the sound of the voice because, oh, my glasses are wonky again. I think I've got a lopsided head. Um, or if they're doing it because they generally are thick as fuck. Um, but under no way does going on a cycle improve your immune system. Steroids create stress. Uh, they create inflammation, and as a result, they reduce your immune response. We, most of us are aware of test flu, whether we've all experienced it or not, is a different matter. Um, test flu is an immune response to the injection of hormones. It's when your body treats the hormones as a virus and it triggers an immune response. The other thing that happens as well, though, is that we have an underlying virus, that our immune system is quite capable of coping with. And then when we start steroids, the added stress overloads our immune system, and then we start becoming symptomatic to that virus. Uh, so you get two happening. So under no circumstances does going on gear boost your immune system. DECA has some quite promising properties of anti-inflammation and stuff like that, but really, seriously, your best thing at this stage is to either be off or on a correct TRT dosing. If you're on cycle, you are going to impact your immune system. It doesn't mean you're going to get the virus. It just means that if you do, your immune system's not going to be as efficient as it could be. What that equates to in real world, 
will be different for every individual. Um, and then there's a lot of talk at the moment about the virus being stopped with estrogen injections. So before everyone starts running shitloads of tests so their estrogen is really high with no AIs, getting gyno and thinking it's going to save them from the virus, I thought it might be a good idea to just cover that topic. Now, basically, what they've noticed is that females don't get the same level of symptoms and have a much better ability to cope with the virus than males do. This is statistically true, and they've seen it throughout all age groups, and that bit's important. So it was theorized that there's something about female makeup that makes them better at coping with the virus. Now, the virus enters the cell through the ACE uh, receptor. Um, and it is known that, that androgens trigger this receptor and that estrogen desensitizes this receptor. This is a bit layman's terms, but it's as close as we need to be for this. So the theory is that if you have higher levels of estrogen in your body, ACE receptors are downregulated. Therefore, it's more difficult for the virus to enter the cell. The bit that throws out on this is, and they are looking at this, I believe there's a couple of trials currently going on looking at estrogen uh, supplementation in order to help cope with the virus. They've seen the same patterns of resistance to the virus in females in postmenopausal women, so women that have low estrogen. So there is argument that the estrogen argument is not true uh, and that it's something else. And one very practical argument that's been put forward is that women generally are just more hygienic than men. They're more careful. They wash their hands more thoroughly. They wash their hands more often. And their personal hygiene and okay, is better than males, whereas males tend to touch lots of things with our hands, not wash them, shove them in our face, shove them in our mouth, shove them up our noses, down our pants, and whatever else you can think of. Well, that's not generally how females behave. So I'm very valid argument as well so at this stage it is all theory there is no concrete proof that estrogen is going to protect you from the virus there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that women cope with it much better the the reasons for that and pathways for that are as yet unknown but we do know that it enters the cell through the ace receptor and we know that hormones play a role in the regulation of that receptor. So there is something there. How impacting it's going to be as yet, we don't know. So don't go running out and trying to find estrogen or progesterone or running high tests with no AI so you have higher estrogen. Any cycle at this point is going to have an impact on your immune system and make it difficult for your body to cope with the virus if you are unlucky enough to contract it. Okay, so hopefully that clears that up and puts to bed some of the bollocks that's floating around. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all coping well. Um, at, at this stage, it's sort of becoming the new normal, Is particularly in the UK, is lockdown, and I know there's a lot of pressure to get back to normal, uh, and it would appear that people are starting to take that decision upon their own backs and I sort of have seen much more traffic and, and people moving about. I'm not casting judgment on that each to their own. Um, you've got to do what you feel comfortable with and what you feel safe with. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics or the conspiracy theories. I have my own ideas and they're staying my ideas. I'm not turning this channel into a huge debate about whether it's population control or it's this or it's that or it's over. And if comments of that nature do appear under this video, they will be deleted. Not interested. Not the platform for it to be discussed as far as I'm concerned. However, I hope you're all well. If you're struggling with your training, routine is key. Routine is incredibly important. Uh, appreciate that that's not always the easiest thing to do. And maybe it may be worth looking at more productive ways or more productive things to do i.e. 
instead of trying to maintain tons of muscle mass or grow, if you don't have access to the equipment and the kettlebell workouts are getting a bit boring, maybe look at doing a cut, maybe look at getting leaner. Muscle memory is a wonderful thing, and if you generally had decent muscle mass, it will return rather quickly post this period of time anyway. So it does no harm in getting lean, does it? Uh, myself, my own personal training, I've done fuck all. Um, I am just awaiting, in fact, it should come today, delivery of a new heavy bag. Um, there's my lovely bracket to hang the fucking thing. And I've thrown a beam up outside two buildings that are outside the house, um, which will eventually be covered with a, a basic tin roof. So bought the roof in, wood gets delivered next Friday. So I'll have a week of bringing the bag in every day in case it rains, but then after that, it'll be at least shower proof and, and I'll be doing that. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, in the short term. Um, but otherwise, I hope you're all safe. Um, there's not a lot of like advice I can give in the way of people that are struggling. It can be a hard time for a lot of people. I understand that. Um, all I can suggest is that you dwell on what you do have and not what you don't have, which isn't always easy, I understand. And if it's beyond your control, fuck it. There's not really anything you can do, is there? Focus on what you can control and try and be positive and productive in those areas as you can. At that, I'm going to get off. So take care, guys. Look after yourselves. Stay safe. And I'll speak to you soon.